The best camera is the camera that's with you everywhere. What do I mean by that? I mean, we carry our smartphones with us everywhere and they're pretty decent cameras. But why am I specifically saying you should take a camera with you everywhere? Hi, I'm Eli. I make YouTube videos about photography, the Micro Four Thirds system. So today I'm going to show you my everyday carry camera setup. And it's taken me a while to kind of settle on this. When I chose the setup, I had a few requirements. I wanted it to be a Micro Four Thirds system because that's what I shoot. I wanted it to be weather sealed because I live in Ireland. I wanted it to do all right video if needed. And I wanted something that was fairly unassuming. I didn't want to look like I have a 4,000 euro setup as I'm walking down the road. And this is what I arrived on. It is the Olympus EM5 Mark II uh, with the Lumix 12 to 60 kit lens that's weather sealed. Now, this isn't a review on this actual camera or lens. I've done videos on both of those, so you can find them up here. It's more about why I chose them for everyday carry. Well, why do I even want to carry a camera with me anyway? Let me explain. With any skill, be it photography, music, uh, going to the gym, time on task is the biggest way to improve. It's that simple. If you want to get better at writing music, write more music. You want to get better at the gym, go to the gym more. You want to get better at taking photos? take more photos. So that's, that's the biggest reason, right? Is just improve, improve, improve. You might not even use any of the photos you take when you're out, but if you're out with the camera, practicing your composition, practicing the technical aspects, getting your exposure proper, then when the time comes for you to do an actual shoot or whatever, you're going to know your gear. You're going to be really good at it. Yeah. You could just use your phone to take the image, but you're kind of limited with focal lengths on the phones. Even the newest iPhone, you have like a five times optical zoom, but tactility, the ability to actually like physically click a dial, um, it's pretty big for a lot of people and also just ergonomic. This isn't that comfortable, particularly for a long period of time. Look how weird my hand looks when I'm doing this. It's a pretty small body. It's still not super comfortable, but it's a lot more comfortable in the hand than my phone. So I had my requirements and it took me a while to get to this. I have a G9 as well, which is what I'm filming this on. And I love that camera. I could use it in the dark. It's so comfortable in the hand, but it's a bit big for every day. Size is a concern for a few reasons. I drive a maxi scooter. So while I do have a lot of space under the seat and I can fit my full photography setup there, more often than not, there's stuff under the seat with like waterproofs or just shopping and that kind of stuff. So I wanted something really small. I also wanted something that's not like a big bulky rucksack. I wanted a little bag I can hang on my door and I can just take that out with me whenever I leave the house, which leads me to the bag. This is a low pro slingshot. It's their smallest model. I got it for, I want to say like 25 euro on MPB, which is a bit of a steal. Cause like you'd pay that for a really cheap camera bag anyway. Yeah, there it is the slingshot 100 AW. And I arrived on this bag for a few reasons. This bag will comfortably hold, it'll hold my G9 with my ultra big telephoto. Normally what's in this bag is my EM5, with the lens I just showed and I even include a little 25 mil f1.7 and a big power bank. That's it. That's my everyday carry photography setup, but there's a few extras. I carry a little notebook and a few pens just because I'm trying to get into more like sort of tactile pen and paper stuff, uh, thinking of video ideas, thinking of photography trips, that kind of stuff. And I have this pocket at the front, which at the moment is carrying a hat and gloves because it's uh, it's getting a bit cold outside. And again, I'm not saying this is the bag you should buy for everyday carry photography. I thought really hard about what I want in a bag and that fit the bill pretty much. The only downside to this bag for me is it doesn't carry a water bottle. Again, I'm not taking this bag out into the woods with me. This is my bag for going out for the day with the family. I want to take some photos while I'm out or I'm going out to get bread and milk, but I'll bring this with me just in case I see it. So the main reason for taking your camera everywhere is what if you miss some? I've got photos that I've taken that I really like that I wouldn't have had if I didn't have this setup with me. I would call my style walkabout photography. And my whole philosophy with this is it's travel photography, but nowhere exotic. It's putting yourself in that mindset of when you go on holiday and everything's super interesting because it's new and you take photos of a random window because it looks interesting. But we live around so many interesting things and we just don't really notice them because we're not in that frame of mind. And having your camera with you kind of helps with that, I think. So there's a few ways I've optimized this for making it as versatile as possible. The first is mainly this lens. It goes from 12 mil to 60 mil, 24 mil to 120 mil equivalent means that you can go pretty wide and you can get pretty tight if needed. I keep a polarizer on the lens all the time because I live in Ireland and everything's wet. So I try and get rid of the shine. And if I'm taking photos and there's water and I want that to be nice and clear or just the sky and I want to make it pop more often than not, I need the polarizer. And if I don't need it, it's not that big of a hindrance to have it on. There's a lens hood, which I do kind of put on if needed. It doesn't take up any extra space in the bag because it just fits on like this. The actual body itself, I have a wrist strap 
this is nothing fancy it's just like a peak design clone thing but it does the job at keeping this secure in my hand and this body like i said is weather sealed so brilliant in ireland it also has a high megapixel mode so i can leave this lent on like a table or a rock and it'll like move the sensor and give me i think it's a 50 megapixel file a 50 megapixel file from a camera that is about as big as my hand it's pretty impressive here are my tips for creating your everyday camera carry identify what you are able to take with you. Let's say you're an office commuter and you cycle to work every day and you just have like messenger style bag. Maybe a tiny little point and shoot that brings the lens out and extends is ideal because you can fit it in your bag and there's so many options from Lumix and I know everyone loves the Ricoh but it's so expensive. Maybe if you were to pick up a like a Lumix G1 and pair it with the 12 to 32 the 12 to 32 the like tiny little pancake zoom and i think the micro four thirds system is ideal for everyday carry but if you shoot sony the sony aps-c bodies are tiny and great uh, if you shoot canon or nikon yeah they have some smaller bodies and smaller lenses too but i think the older systems are pretty handy for this so the eos m mount from canon or the efm is the it's the eos m line from canon but the efm mount uh, them lenses are tiny, their bodies are small. You can find a few of them used for a decent price. Let's say you're the kind of person that's going mountain biking a lot. Again, I think a small body, but like you could get some sort of like, um, like a waist mounted bag or whatever, right? It's just about finding what works for you. The bag is the main thing. And people are picky with camera bags. It took me like three or four bags to settle on the slingshot. Um, and like I said, I don't even use that as my like, only camera bag. I do have a big rucksack for when I have to take everything out. And another reason for carrying your camera with you everywhere is just to capture memories. Like, yeah, we can use our smartphone, but there's something nice about tactilely pressing the button and capturing the memory. I've taken some lovely photos of my family just out and about having a good time with this body. I've captured some lovely moments where I've just been by myself in nature with this camera. I'm not going to do anything with them, but they're nice memories. But then again, I've also just taken really nice photos with this camera. I was out in Strand Hill, which is a beach in County Sligo, and the light was just phenomenal. The light was just cracking through the clouds and everything was like silhouetted against this light. So I just whipped this out. Luckily, the polarizer helped a lot. I didn't get any blown out light. And I took these and they are phenomenal images and I've got them printed and I really like them. I wasn't even going out that day to take the photos. To take photos, I was just going to the beach with my family. What I recommend you do is Take a heavy inventory of what you have already. Can that be adapted to work for an everyday environment? I already had that lens because I used to use it a lot with my G9. You might have a small camera bag that was just gifted to you or included as part of your camera that you're like, oh, it's too small, I'll never use it. But it might be ideal for taking with you everywhere. Or if you know, okay, here's my rucksack that I take to college every day and I have this much space that I can fit a camera in. You can find cameras that fit in that space. Even a GoPro will take raw files that you can then process pretty well and can fit in pretty much anything. Yeah, smartphones are great cameras. I'm gonna try and work on a video in a bit where I actually do use my like old smartphone to take photos and edit them and show you the process. Um, time taking photos will improve your ability to take photos. That's it. That's all I'm really trying to get across in this video and I think hey, taking a camera with you everywhere is essential. I'm not saying take your big like, um, Nikon Z7 out with you everywhere, or your big Canon R6. Small little pocket camera, ideal. That's my everyday camera setup. That's my thoughts on having an everyday camera setup. Also, I've been working on a bit of a filming space. Um, someone very helpfully pointed out that filming on my bed was not super professional, and yeah, you're right. I should know. So, it's nothing fancy at the moment. I've got a print there. I took that in Berlin with my G9. It's actually an A1 print, but um, the print failed halfway through. And there's a bit of smudging there. So it's in like an A2 frame and it looks pretty good. I'm trying to make my setup look a bit nicer. And I just realized there's something there in the corner. I'm like slowly inching towards a thousand subscribers. And I was like, no, I should probably actually make a space to film in front of. And um, I might do a giveaway when I reach a thousand. I think that would be pretty cool. I'm not sure what I'll give away yet. Um, but things are happening. I've got some more POV kind of photo vlog style of things that I'm planning. Uh, so I'm scouting out locations for that. I'm also trying to figure out how I'll work that. Will I just have it so there's music and like GoPro footage or will I have like a mic as well? Um, 
I'll try it all out and see. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, a little ramble over. Um, but if you do like this content and my kind of rambly nature about stuff, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, like I said, I'm nearly at a thousand subscribers and I didn't even think I'd make a hundred. Okay, ramble over. Um, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.